Hey guys, Rick with SeeMyBeach.com. We're here today with Sheriff Ramsey from the Florida Keys. How are you doing today, sir? Rick, I'm doing great. Glad to be here with you awesome. and the kids. Always Thank a pleasure, you, my friend. Thank it's you. Awesome, awesome. We're here at Treasure Village Montessori. He just did an uh, interview with a bunch of kids for helping Don Litter, which was awesome. And that's our nonprofit. And uh, I wanted to uh, just ask him a few questions. Because we've, we've, we've talked at events and you've litter cleanups and things for the community and all. And, and we just never really talked about some things that I want to know from you. So I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay. All right. First of all, we're going to do a shout out to Donatella. Hey, My Donatella. second assistant, Donatella, she is so wonderful. A team, I tell you, I wouldn't be able to function without her. She Unbelievable. Was, she's impressive. I was telling him off camera, Donatella responded to everything we needed immediately and professionally. It was amazing. She is something. She's, she's great. So. She's like my right hand person. Awesome. Yeah. Shout out to you, Donatella. All right. And uh, um, anyway, so first question I want to know is what age, at what age did you decide you want to have a career in law enforcement? You know, it's interesting. Uh, most people don't really know it's later in life what they want to do. They're trying to figure it out. Right. You know, even when they're adults, sometimes they're still trying to figure it out. Right. I just always knew when I was a little kid, when I was just like, you know, just in elementary school. I always wanted to be a police officer. It was my goal, my objective. I always wanted it. I never changed from what I wanted to do. And when I graduated high school, as soon as I could, I got into a police academy. And I was a police officer at 21 years old. And I started my career as a police officer in the Marathon Patrol Station at the age of uh, 21. Just a kid. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, as you know, I, I gush about him a little bit because he's the... I, we, with SeeMyBeach.com, we've dealt with sheriffs in communities all over because we always try to show, we're, we're heavily family friendly, so we try to show the positivity of, because you're, they always see the negativity in the, on the news. We like to show the positivity because it's not quite like it's portrayed sometimes. So, but I, I've met a lot of sheriffs and you are like, they're here, you're there, and everyone I've ever met. Well, that's very kind. You know, um, there's a great men and women in law enforcement. I can only control myself and right. my team. And I try to lead by example. I try to really focus on community-oriented policing. Right. Really doing community policing. Every agency says they're community-oriented. Most are really not. Right. They talk it, but they don't back it up. Right. We strive to be active in our community with our kids, Rotary, Chamber, leaderships. We want the citizens to know us. And I always tell, I tell people all the time, if the citizens know us, they're probably going to like us, trust us, and respect us. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know us, how can you like us? How can you trust us? How can you respect this? I want positive relationships early, and I also want to work with the citizens to know what their problems are. Not just criminal problems, we want to focus on quality of life. Right. If I don't have these relationships, how do I know what the citizens want, need, deserve, expect? Mm -hmm. And when we know what they want, deserve, expect, you know, demand, then we try to work with them to problem solve, to figure right. out how can we solve these problems together Right. I continue to focus on the citizens being an extension of the sheriff's office. Right. You know, and power and numbers are so efficient and effective. So we, we really focus on really trying to have our finger on a pulse of the community, know the community, have them know us, have this mutual working relationships, which most agencies don't have. Right. Because they're not, they're not truly invested in community policing. They're not willing to put the time and effort into it. It's a lot of time and effort to build these relationships, but they're so critical for me to be efficient and effective and do my job as the chief law enforcement officer is to, is to have the citizens as a partner. Right. That's what I always hear every time I mention Sheriff Ramsey. I mean, literally, you can mention him to anyone in the Florida Keys, and they're like, about the litter cleanups and things like that. And then I always talk about, it's kind of funny, I always talk about at Car Sound Key, you show me the back of your car, which, do you mind showing it to me today? Sure, we'll take a look at it. Okay. Yeah. He, he, I tell people what you have in the back of your car, and I've told 100 people this, and everybody's like blown away by it. Well, uh, friends, I tell my my officers all the time that when you see graffiti, they've got 24 hours to remove it. And I also focus in, I don't ask them to do things I won't do myself. So anti-graffiti is so important to me that when we were out there doing a community cleanup, we talked about it, I actually showed uh, Rick and others, when they asked me about it, back on my car. And I open up the trunk, and I have 12 to 15 cans of spray paint, mm -hmm. and the variety of colors. As I see stuff, I, color, I try to color match to coordinate, to paint out graffiti. You know, graffiti is nasty, it's just, I tell people when you see it, first thing people think about is crime, gang, violence. We don't want to see that. We want good, clean, safe communities. Clean communities are safer communities. That makes sense. Dirty to show neighborhoods are more likely to have crime. So we want a place where our citizens and visitors can come out and say, man, this is paradise, this is beautiful. So I do keep uh, paint in my car. If I see it, I stop right away, I paint it out, and 95% of the paint 
that's done is done by spray cans. We can spray it out pretty quickly. 5% mm -hmm. requires to get uh, paint and rollers and roll out the bigger stuff. If that happens, every station I keep 10 gallons of recycled paint from waste management so we don't have to buy the paint. It doesn't go to landfills. It helps keep our community green and clean. Nice. And we do it. It's amazing. Uh, that kind of stuff is an example to me. I try to be an example to other people just through living positively. And uh, you, you're an example to me on that, or, 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 or uh, Thank you. what do you call it, the word I'm looking for. Um, someone you look up to. <laughs> anyway, it's back to the first question. Okay. This is my follow-up on that. Has there been times, have there been times when you regretted that decision to become a law enforcement officer? i got to tell you, the answer is no, which is right. hard to believe because most people question the job of the in. I was the, expecting a yes. Oh, yeah, people always question, was this the right path? I could have done this. Maybe I should have been a firefighter. Maybe I should have been with this and that. You know, it's one of those things that I just always knew I wanted to do. Right. And I always knew early, uh, one day I wanted to be the sheriff. When I was a young police officer, I always told people, one day I'm going to be the boss. And when <laughs> I was a young officer, I was always taking classes on line supervision, mid-management, leadership, right. you know, supervision, anything I could to try to know that one day that's where I aspired to be. And, you know, this for me is a rewarding job because we get to see amazing stuff, help people do great stuff. And every day is so different. It's not mundane. You know, I've been a police officer over 35 years right here in this community. And to this day, I still love coming to work. I love doing my job. I stop cars. I back up officers. I take calls. I do our graffiti cleanup initiatives. I try to be uh, active, current, try to lead by example. But I love this job. You know, it's just the best job ever. It's never going to be rich being a police officer. <laughs> you don't you, do it because you're rich. You do it. You don't take that you, job for the rich thing. You yeah. do it because you, the, your heart's in it. Okay. And you want to make positive differences in your community and people's lives. Yeah. He just explained why I do CMYBeach.com. Because you should do what you love. And if you love it, you're usually going to be pretty good at Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, anyway, next question is, if you would not gone into law enforcement, what would your career path have possibly been? Well, if I wasn't going to be a police officer, my next career path was... Okay, we got safety patrol. <laughs> safety <laughs> patrol. <laughs> Perfect timing. Perfect stuff. If I wasn't going to be a police officer, I would have gone in the Army and been a helicopter pilot. Okay. At times, uh, a second career would have been a helicopter pilot. Okay. That's very cool as well. Uh, so what is the most fantastic thing about your job? And I know there's a lot, but what... I tell you, there are so many fantastic parts of this job, but what we're doing today, right. spending time with our community, the kids, next generation, I love going out to Rotary Chamber Leadership Schools, interacting with our citizens, our general public, the people who are my bosses. You know, I work directly for the citizens. Right. If they're unhappy, they vote me out. If they're happy, I remain in office to try to do good stuff. You know, I tell people all the time, I don't work for the county commission. People think I work for the county commission. I'm an independent constitutional officer who's elected by the populace, and they're my bosses. I enjoy spending time with them, talking, hearing good stories, you know, helping, being part of it. You know, so I try to do a lot of public speaking. At Rotary Chamber Leaderships, I tried to be in the upper, middle, lower keys. Right. The county is so long, it's hard. Right. You know, I live in Marathon. This morning I left Marathon, I was in Key West. Then I came back to Marathon for a couple of meetings. Now I'm up here with you. I got a meeting tonight at 5 o'clock, so I'm up and down the county. But I really enjoy spending time with our citizens and just interacting with the public. Right. Well, that's one of the things about you. One of the things I said, you know, I've, I've had a few sheriffs that I met that I really didn't like, to be quite honest with you. And it was always like you're inconveniencing them if you ask them to do an interview. With you, it's like, yeah, let's interact with the people. That's who I want to talk to. Yep. And uh, never any hesitation. I think that's fantastic. So Thank he's you. already been through a lot. I mean, we were out there with Helping Dot Litter, and all the kids were asking questions and, and uh, wanted to do pictures and stuff like that. And complete personalization for each child. I, I love seeing that. Thank you. So you already showed me what the most fantastic thing about your job is. What's the most frustrating? <sighs> you know, right now, the um, most frustrating thing is uh, employees trying yeah. to get and keep recruitment and retention. You know, we all see across America industry struggling for staffing. Right. We go out to a restaurant and half the restaurants close, or it takes a long time to get food because they don't have enough servers. Hotels, you go to check in a hotel, unless you're there for three days or more, there's no hotel room service. Right now, people have seemed to stop working, and this is an expensive community to live in, so it's hard right now for us to recruit and retain staffing. I could probably hire. 50 people tomorrow in various jobs in the sheriff's office I could find them. So a very frustrating is trying to get and keep a workforce, trying to pay a fair wage that they can afford to live here. Mm -hmm. What we pay people here in central North Florida would be tons of money. Right. But this is the most expensive county out of 67 in the Florida to live. Really? Wow. We're number one in the most cost 
um, to live in a county, and there's no affordable housing. I have tons of people who want to work for me. They want to come down and work here. They love the sheriff's office. They say, I can't find a place to rent. There's no place. They want $3,500 for a single wide 1960 trailer. I can't live in a 1960 trailer with my family. I'm living in a three bedroom, two bath ranch house here. Right. I'm not going to leave that to come to that, so I can't take the job. So frustrating is, and there's no easy answer because there's the affordable housing dilemma has been here for years yeah. and it's getting worse every year. Property values are exploding. exploding. We know there's more vacation rentals, which means less places for people to rent. They're buying up trailer parks, taking out the building credits, and putting them into big high-end developments. Mm -hmm. So every year there's less affordable housing for police, fire, rescue, teachers, nurses. Some of the most critical components are for society. If we don't have those, you just don't have a good community. Yeah. So we struggle to uh, make sure we have staffing to provide the top level of service that we do, mm -hmm. and I'm just concerned about the future, what that's going to look like. Yeah, I, I know the challenge you're going through because literally now every time I leave one of my customers, they're like, if you know somebody who wants a job, come over here. You know, it's like everybody yeah. is looking for good people. It's weird. But um, anyway, so the next question I have is, what is your favorite question when people interview you? Got to be one of mine, right? Yeah, no, I, <laughs> would, I love the question about what's the best part of your job because it yeah. always falls back into community policing. Right. Citizens. Relationship. I talk about communication, cooperation, partnership, teamwork. All those are a direct correlation to our general public. They right. have to have those. They have to have that from me. So I always fall back to, look, the best part of my job is the citizens I work for, work with, and uh, spending time hearing, talking, helping, being part of uh, problem solving. You know, that's, that's just the best part of my job. I that's love awesome. It. That's awesome. Um, what message would you send to, kind of talking back to the, the point of trying to hire people, what message would you just send to people who are thinking about getting in law enforcement, not just necessarily in the Keys, but just in general because it's a different type of a career? Well, I will say that a lot of people have been kind of shied away from law enforcement because over the last couple of years, in some other areas, Portland, Seattle, Chicago, Oregon, New York, we watch the news, you see how police officers are disrespected. Right. You know, spit on, you know, assassinated, beat up, you know, and it's becoming those areas that the police are like giving up. Yeah. I don't want to do this, I'm going to do something different. And it's hard to find young people that want to take those jobs because they see these people being disrespected. All right. So I can't control those areas. Only thing I can tell people who live here in Monroe or may want to come here is this community is so different. This is one of the most lovable community when it comes to police community relations. Yep. As you said, you know, oh. this community loves the sheriff's office. When we had defund the police going on across the nation, never did we have it here. Mm -hmm. All we had here was people saying, thank you for your service, we support you, arm around you, you know, I'm going to pay your bill, someone paid your food bill, all day long. There's not a day go by, someone doesn't come up and say thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. I just had it when I was at Mangrove Mike's for a quick bite for lunch. Guy followed me out to tell me thank you for your service. Here, you're respected, you're treated well, community is going to back you, support you. So here is a good place, I think, to be a police officer, but I think the image has been tarnished across the nation, which is affecting people's decision about whether this is a good choice. Right. But it is. And our younger kids are trying to figure out whether the police are the good guys or bad guys. All the time that we spend in the schools or in the community keeps reinforcing to the younger population who are trying to figure it out that without question, hands down, we are the good guys. Right. This is still one of the most noble, honorable professions ever. Don't care what anybody says. But while we've seen the last couple of years a lot of negativity, we are seeing a pendulum come back around. Mm -hmm. Those communities which are against the police are now wanting the police back in the community, are trying to recruit officers, get officers, are trying to now back the officers. The defund the police was a cry from a small uh, group that some people lost on to, thinking it was the right political thing, and it backfired in their face because those communities had crime go up to 250, 300, 400 percent, right. violent crimes. It didn't work out well. The message clearly was, you have to have a good, strong relationship with your public safety, police, fire, rescue, to have a good community and work together. And if you are not in sync with the police, and there's any efforts to be uh, oppose them and defund them and be against them, it's only going to help the criminals to continue to victimize people. And the people who are going to get hurt the most are the innocent victims who are trying to protect. Mm -hmm. We have to stand united together, police and community, for the same common goal and cause is make sure we have one of the best, cleanest, safest communities anywhere. We only do that 
by working together as one big team. Right. Well, if every community was like this, I think that would be a very simple equation. Uh, this this community, you know, every time I've had multiple encounters with sheriff's department, not tickets or anything like that, but just you know, running into to sheriffs in different places, you know, and just talking. They all are like Tony from here, Tony from the school. Just top-notch people. You hire very good people. You know, hopefully you're not gonna have to lower that with the, trying to get people. But hopefully, you know, if you're watching this and you're thinking about a, a career in law enforcement, this is the place to go because you come part of something really, really special here. Just all the way around. Now, before we close out the uh, interview, I ran into somebody that I wanted that uh, a dog actually named Keb, and the dog is a search and rescue dog. Been on more than a hundred missions, and he was staying. Wow. He was staying at Key Lime Sailing Club in Cottages. He's solved cold cases and all these different things. And I told the lady, as I'm, the, his uh, owner, that I was going to be interviewing you. And then uh, she says, oh my God, will you give him a book from Kev? Because it's a canine dog, and I thought it might be a good fit. So this is a dog's devotion. Uh, this is actually in our shop section. I, I gave them a free thing because I'm like, we just need to support positive things. So, uh, but anyway, and they wrote a little thing to you in here. And this is the dog's devotion and somewhere in here. She, she wrote it because Kev's working on his penmanship. Um, Anyway, she, she wrote in here, you'll uh, find one it. One more page. Is one more? One more page I can see coming through. There we go. Ah, okay. I didn't even look at it because it's your thing, so I didn't even want to see it. So you can read it. Okay. <laughs> read it to him. Okay, to Sheriff Ramsey and Joy, our adventures. Canine Kev and the Handler. Okay, that was awesome. That's from the mom. It's Suzanne. Suzanne, exactly. So awesome. Anyway, so you have that, and it's a, a gift from, from wow. it's a gift from Kev through her. All right. Well, thank you, Kev and Suzanne. I'm going to enjoy this very much. It's very kind and very impressive. 150 is SAR mission, it's search and rescue. Amazing, amazing. And wow. and my favorite part was she's very kissy. She was kissing me on the cheek while I'm trying to. Oh, you're loving that, huh? I, I'm, I'm like. And that know, was Suzanne or Kev? <laughs> Kev. Kev. Oh. Uh, the, the human women aren't as attracted to me as the dogs are at this point in my life. But, you know. It, it happens. I happens. take what I can get at this Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Yeah, Kev kisses is awesome. But uh, Well, thank you for the book and. Uh, and thank you as well for the um, friendship and the time and the efforts Absolutely. together. Well, I'll tell you what, I've, I've known you for many years now. Yes, sir. And uh, just 100%, you're just like the best sheriff by far. And I just keep saying it, I know. But I want to exude the people who do good jobs because it makes other people do good jobs when they see that uh, people are being exalted for what they do. And you're for one sure. of the best. Well, thank you. The and best. Thank listeners, thank you all. I say the best, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave out hope that there's somebody else better than you that I've never met. There's, there's always someone better than me. So. <laughs> I'm, I don't I'm think glad so. I'm up there, but there's always someone here, and I've got to strive to keep doing better. And as long as you strive to keep at that level, you're doing it every day. So, but but thank want, you so much for the interview. But thank you friend. again, and thanks Absolutely. to your listeners. Bye, everybody, from SeeMyBeach.com, right here at Treasure Village, Montessori. Uh, this school is amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. Kids are great. Just a great school and a great bunch of kids. I enjoy them talking to them, asking their questions, and hear what they got to say. And they're just... Uh, it's always interesting what kids have to say. It really is. This is kind of like the Sheriff Ramsey of schools. <laughs> this is, a, this is an know? awesome school. It really is. Good. I think so as well. So yeah. Awesome. And I got to tour the tower a couple of years ago, which was. Okay. Have you been in the tower? I have not, but I was on the roof. We we're on a rooftop today. We did the rooftop. We did on the rooftop. That was always interesting. That was very cool. So I thought it'd be a cool place to do it. For sure. We'll have to go through the tower sometime. Let you check it out. It's pretty Thank cool. You. Thank you. All right, guys. Take care. SeeMyBeach.com. And I usually don't do the interviews, and you probably know why we let him take this this case because he's so good. Uh, we usually have somebody cute and attractive do the interviews, but I couldn't find anybody in time for this interview, <laughs> so you had to deal with me. It was all good. We, we instead of cute, and we got a fan. So good stuff. Anyway, Thank take you. Take care. Thank you so much. Goodbye, Chris. Hey friends, Rick Ramsey here again. We're walking out to my car today. We were talking earlier about graffiti and spray cans, what's in the back of my car. And Rick wanted to come out here and show you that, yes, this is really in my car. So we're going to see here, we're color coordinating blue, beige, white, silvers, greens, blacks, orange colors. I got all these different colors so we can mix and max when we're spray painting graffiti. So I keep all the stuff out here. I keep extra gloves in the car when I'm doing trash pickups. We're always outside doing stuff in the woods, cleaning <laughs> stuff up. So I gotta have my bug repellent out there too as well. There you go. Well, I think you have 15 cans. You said 12 or 15, that's a lot. There's a lot, there's a few other ones under here, but we keep making sure we're ready to go to um, help aid and assist, keep our community clean. And this is just part of it, keeping all this stuff here. It takes just a minute to pull over, spray out a little graffiti, make it look a little nicer and cleaner and safer. And our focus is trying to help our citizens. You know, here, I got a kit here to help flat tires when people are broke down with flat tires to put air in their tires you know we have um, AEDs if you're having a heart attack here if you're locked out of your car I got a lockout kit to help unlock your doors <laughs> you know so I try to you know I've got a set of loppers here 
which is unusual here, but we got loppers here. And what are those for? Well, you know, if I'm going down the street and there's a speed sign or stop sign that's overgrown with trees you can't see. Right. If you can't see, it does no good. It's true. Instead of calling Public Works or FDOT, I pull over, I get the loppers, we cut it out so you can see the speed sign, we can see the stop sign, or whatever sign it is on the highway. There's generally a reason a sign is there. But we've seen so many signs overgrown, if you can't see it, it's not doing its job. That's so, it. And we always focus on, it takes me two seconds. I could call Florida Department of Transportation or somebody else to do it. But again, is one, I could cut it and clean it and fix it faster than I can make a phone call. Right. So let's just do it. That's it. Let's just do it. Quit talking about it. Let's just do it. Awesome. That's, that's, that's Isabella's... Uh, uh actual inspiration for, for uh, helpin.litter.org. She said, I'm tired of uh, asking other people to do it. I'm just going to do it. I love and hopefully it. she'll have other people who follow her. And she has right now almost 4,000 kids. And what they do is they, they pledge to clean some litter somewhere every day for the rest of their life. I love it. That's yeah. their pledge. Absolutely. Every little bit well, helps me. Just going to keep uh, doing our part. Ev everybody has to. We're going to get it done. That's it. Also, right here at Treasure Village Montessori. Look, we got this, the, the sign right there. in the <laughs> All right. Perfect. Right there. Well, thank you so much, Sheriff Ramsey right, from helpin.litter.org. We'll talk to you later. Yes, sir. That's the handshake of the 21st century. Yes, and you brought some pizzazz to it, man. Pow! Oh, pow! All right, right here. Sheriff Ramsey, thank you much, sir. Take care. Bye-bye.